Today, there's a lot of small news, so this episode will be a little bit different. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD, or MSI technically. During MSI's Insider Show on YouTube, Eric Van Buren, their marketing director, revealed that a new AMD microcode update should arrive next month. Essentially, the thing that AMD has been tweaking constantly since the release of Ryzen 3000. During the show, he said that this new microcode should bring 100 plus improvements, which are not all about fixing issues, but also adding features and other improvements. The state of Ryzen 3000 has kind of stabilized, with most users seeing an improvement since the latest microcode update, although I do wonder what kind of features AMD could add. Maybe it's all for the motherboard vendors though. In any case, the new microcode should make its way into BIOS download pages in November. In other hardware news, Gigabyte just unveiled their new X299X motherboards for Cascade Lake X CPUs. Now, as is the old uh, X299 chipset still works with the new Cascade Lake X processors. The only difference in these uh, X299X chipsets is the support for the full 72 PCIe lanes. In Microsoft news, well, you guys probably already know this, but they unveiled a ton of new stuff. Now, I'm not going to list them all here, but I'd like to touch on what I found interesting. First is the Surface Pro X. It's been a while since I wanted to see the return of an ARM-based Microsoft tablet. I know that the uh, 2012 Surface RT was definitely a rocky product. I mean, its inability to run x86 applications made it pretty much a paperweight for a lot of people, but this time, Microsoft Microsoft has access to much more powerful hardware thanks to its partnership with Qualcomm. That might push more developers to make apps available on that platform. In fact, Adobe is going to bring over their Creative Cloud suite over to ARM starting with Fresco. Then Microsoft had the two quirky products that are supposed to launch in holiday of 2020, the Surface Neo and the Surface Duo. The Neo is basically a foldable computer with two nine inch screens that will run a special version of Windows 10 called Windows 10 X. It will be powered by Intel's Lakefield processor, which uses the company's Foveros 3D stacking technology. What I'm pretty curious about is the keyboard and pen. They both just magnetically stick to the back of the computer when it's closed, which is kind of an awkward way to do things. Although I really like the way that the keyboard can be placed in two different positions when it's uh, magnetically attached to the computer. That's pretty neat. The Surface Duo, on the other hand, is an Android foldable phone that also has two screens. Honestly, I really like this one. It's almost like Microsoft said, you know what? Phone calls are a little overrated. Let's just make a phone that allows for more productivity. And that's what they came up with. Anyways, enough with Microsoft. Let's move on to something else. In gaming news, it looks like Sony finally cracked. After a long time in beta and only featured in specific games, PlayStation's crossplay is going to be a thing. It was already announced on some big games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but it's still a gamble to see if game developers will actually take the time to retroactively enable it on older games. Another good piece of news coming from the company is a price cut to their PlayStation Now streaming service. It used to be a hefty $19.99 a month and is now slashed to $9.99. Considering PlayStation Now has the biggest library of all the streaming services out right now, I think it has over 750 games, I'd say that it's a really good bargain. The only thing they need to fix now is the resolution. Right now, if you want to play, it's limited to 720p at 60fps on PC. In smartphone news, it looks like there are already leaks on the next OnePlus device. Yep, literally a week after the 7T released and five months after the 7 Pro, we already have leaks on the OnePlus 8. The back of the OnePlus 8 should feature a triple camera setup similar to the 7 Pro. The display is said to be 6.5 inches with a similar curvature to the 7 Pro. For the front facing camera, it looks like OnePlus is switching things up with a hole punch display. The hole is supposedly going on the top left. With those specs, the OnePlus 8 doesn't seem much better than the 7 Pro for example. It has a smaller screen and a hole punch display. The release cycle of OnePlus phone is really weird right now. Are we going to see an 8, an 8T, and an 8 Pro next year? 
All right, so I'm sorry if some of these news are a little bit late. I had this happen to my car and I've had to deal with it for the last few days. Not only trying to find a replacement tire, but trying to fix the bumper too. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. How do I remember this song? <gasps> NBA Street Volume 3. I remember that. I played it on GameCube.